Okay. So um, this is uh, this picture which we've seen before is the picture what uh, what happens. So it looks pretty complex, but we talked about um, quite a lot of things already. So you should just think of ordinary free radical polymerization in different phases. Yeah. So if I'm in a water phase, everything that you learn in polymer chemistry year two happens. Initiation, propagation, termination, chain transfer is just a phase. If I if I then in my particle phase, the same thing happens. Yeah. Initiation, propagation, termination, chain transfer happens in there. So in every phase, these kind of things can happen. So what have we seen thus far? Well, we start at the top with initiator decomposes, starts to grow in the water phase. Then I end, uh, become a zemer, which is like I become surface active, which is two or three units for styrene. Then I can choose. I can potentially join a micelle if there is a micelle, and then I become a particle because it's micellar nucleation. If there is no micelle or I can't find a micelle or can't find a monomer droplet, then I can further propagate. And then I become a gemer, which basically is I collapse on myself and then I'm a particle. That's called homogeneous nucleation. So then suddenly I'm classed as a particle. Yeah? The other thing is that once I am a particle, I can grow from my initiator, I can become a zemer, I can enter an already existing particle. This is rather interesting because this particle could already contain a radical. So if I add another radical, then there is two. Could there be two? Yes, no, because the particle is pretty small. So let's have a look at that in a little bit more in detail a bit later. And then there's another thing because once I'm in the particle, I can undergo propagation, termination, but also chain transfer. So what would happen now if I would transfer to monomer? I get a monomeric styrenic radical, and we know that styrene dissolves a little bit in water, so maybe the styrene radical also can dissolve a little bit in water, so maybe it can leave the particle, yeah? So not only we have events that call radical entry, putting a radical inside the particle, there's also potentially an exit stream, yeah? So a styrenic radical could potentially leave a particle, which is called exit, and then maybe it can re-enter another particle, so it's re-entry. Yeah, so all these things happen. Now, the majority of the polymerization reaction happens inside the particle. Remember, only a few units of styrene get added in the water phase. Two, three, four, five, six, maybe, until I hit J crit, and then I'm classed as a particle. So everything else happens in the particle. Yeah, so once I have my particle, I've passed my particle formation stage, Let's look at the particle growth stage. What would happen when I go inside a particle? Okay, so I'm past stage one, made my particles, and then my, if I don't have any issues with coagulation, and if I, if I don't make more particles later on, so if I end up with a stable set of particles, and then I enter phase two. And phase two we've seen, is that the rate of polymerization, so the first derivative of the graph monomer conversion versus time, is constant. So it's a straight line, which is a bit strange. Yeah? Now, the overall rate of polymerization, the predominant reaction, happens in the particles. So I could say monomer conversion, if I monitor that, which is on the y-axis on the graph, versus time, if I'm interested in the first derivative of that, that's an expression for the rate of polymerization. So is that dx dt basically is a function of a bunch of things. So you know from polymer chemistry, hopefully year two or for kinetics, you know that the rate of propagation is responsible for the overall rate of polymerization because the majority of monomer gets consumed during propagation. So it's Kp times the monomer concentration times the radical concentration. Now, we've, we've decided that the majority of the polymerization reaction takes place inside the particle, yeah? So I need to know the monomer concentration inside my particle, yeah? So it's Kp times Cmp, which is the monomer concentration inside the particle. And then I need to know how many radicals are in my particle. So that's where we deviate a little bit. So we introduce a term called n-bar. n-bar is 
the average number of radicals per particle. It's a number, it's not a molar concentration. And that's for one particle. So if I wanna have this for my entire system, obviously I have to multiply it with the concentration, as in number per liter in this case, of the total amount of particles. So I multiply this with n, it's the number of particles. And because I'm in numbers and not in moles, I have to divide by the number of Avogadro to go to moles. And because I expressed here as the rate of, of um, monomer consumption here, um, and I don't have a concentration term in there, uh, I basically have to divide by the, the, the analytical concentration that I put in at the start of my monomer in order to make this work. Yeah? So that reaction of that equation describes how steep that slope in that graph is. And if you look at that, uh, this can only be constant if my concentration of monomer is constant and if n bar is constant. Otherwise, it could not be a straight line. So let's have a look a little bit at this. So what would actually happen? Imagine I'm a particle and I have a radical in there. So I start to consume monomer. So my monomer con concentration will drop. The particle doesn't like that. Yeah? So what happens is that monomer from the water phase enters the particle. It basically restocks monomer. The water phase doesn't like that. So the monomer droplet, monomer from the monomer droplet goes into the water phase. So net result is particles grow, monomer droplets shrink. Yeah? Which means that throughout stage, the monomer concentration in the particle roughly stays constant. Yeah? The radical flux in most reactions is relatively constant, and that's why you end up with that straight line. Then in the last stage, in stage three, your monomer droplets are gone. And then obviously your rate of polymerization drops because now you consume your monomer in the particle, you get transferred from the water phase, but there are no monomer droplets anymore, so slowly but surely all the concentrations of the monomer drop in all the phases. Okay, I think that it's a good point to stop here because this looks like a big equation which we have to spend a little bit more time on rather than a few minutes in order to understand this. So. Let's, uh, let's stop here and continue on Monday, right? <laughs>